Antarctica, the world's greatest freezer, is melting. The Earth is doomed. How will humans fight back before our cities are inundated? And we're running out of time. Now that was scary, right? But that's how most people get their information on climate change. Now we're not saying that the science is inaccurate. Yes, there is a problem, which is rising carbon in the atmosphere, which has history of going up and down. Here's where humans came in. Here's where we started burning oil, gas and coal. And here's where we are today. In fact, the actual level of carbon dioxide equivalent is 490 ppm. So yes, that's the problem statement. But is it game over? Or are there solutions to address this? Global warming has been in the public sphere for more than 40 years. Our atmosphere seems to be getting warmer. This is bad. Well, it's been calculated a few degrees rise in the Earth's temperature would melt the polar ice caps. But no one has mapped out concrete solutions to reverse global warming. Well, until now. Environmentalist Paul Hawken started a small organization in Sausalito to map out the solutions. He called it Project Drawdown. Drawdown is basically a military term which means a reduction in size of military force. But he defined drawdown as reduction in the carbon in atmosphere. Also, the term drawdown establishes a goal that was basically missing from climate change discussions. They didn't have money so they sent out call to universities and college students from 22 countries and 6 continents showed up as drawdown research fellows and with the help of 120 advisors they came up with 100 solutions that are in hand and practical to reverse global warming. What did they do? They did the math. They ranked all these solutions based on overall carbon dioxide equivalent arrested in gigatons until 2050 in a conservative scenario. They figured out what could be the cost for the next 30 years and the net savings. And all this data is based on peer-reviewed research. These are the cliche images we see when someone talks about climate change. But it's much more than that. Let's see some of the drawdown solutions and try to break these cliches. Afforestation. Creating new forests where there were none before is the aim of afforestation. It is ranked number 15 out of 100 with a potential savings of $392 billion. High-speed rail. It is powered almost exclusively by electricity and not diesel. Compared to driving, flying or riding convention rail, it is the fastest way to travel between two points that are a few hundred miles apart and reduces carbon emissions up to 90%. High-speed rail is expensive and requires high ridership to break even, but it can be an important component of a sustainable transportation system and bring vitality to city centers. Nobody in the world knows better land management than indigenous communities. They have long been the front line of resistance against deforestation, mineral, oil and gas extraction, and the expansion of monocrop plantations. Their resistance prevents land-based carbon emissions and maintains or increases carbon sequestration. Rice is the staple food of 3 billion people, providing one-fifth of calories consumed worldwide. Its cultivation is responsible for at least 10% of agricultural greenhouse gas emissions and 9-19% to of global methane emissions. New techniques can make rice production efficient, dependable and sustainable helping to meet growing demand for the staple food without causing global warming. Clean cook stoves is 21 on the list. Around the world, 3 billion people cook over open fires or on rudimentary stoves. The cooking fuels used by 40% of humanity are wood, charcoal, animal dung, crop residue and coal, which release plumes of smoke and soot. Affordable, effective and durable clean cooking technologies can cut emissions by an incredible 95%. Wind energy is at the crest of initiatives to address global warming in the coming three decades. The wind industry is marked by a rapid increase in number of turbines, dropping costs and heightened performance. 
in many areas wind is either competitive with or less expensive than coal generated electricity onshore wind turbine is the number two solution and offshore wind turbine is number 22 on the list combined together they become the number one solution to reverse global warming this is Namoya, a remote community high in Peru's northern Andes, where farmers spend their days attending to their potato crops under the bright blue sky. People here used to rely on candles for a bit of light after dark, when temperatures can drop to near freezing. But a few months ago, solar panels were installed on their small adobe homes, providing enough electricity for a few light bulbs, a cell phone charger, a radio, and a television. The switch has brought big social and economic benefits. <laughs> And just like that, rooftop solar is replacing kerosene and providing electricity to people in rural South America and parts of Africa. Rooftop solar will gain popularity as the cost of panels falls, driven by incentives to accelerate growth and economies of scale in manufacturing. Rooftop solar is number 10 on the list. Waste production multiplied tenfold over the last century and will likely double again by 2025. Half or less of that waste is generated at a household level. Recycling can reduce emissions because producing new products from recovered materials often saves energy. Managing household waste tends to be the responsibility of city governments or of informal waste collection in lower income cities. Leading cities have achieved recycling rates of 65% or more. Household recycling is number 55 on the list. There are 20 solutions out of 100 which are coming attractions and have great potential for drawdown. Marine permaculture is an innovation to restore natural ocean overturning circulation, a process that brings nutrient-rich waters to the sea surface and restores aquatic plant and animal productivity. Floating kelp forests could sequester billions of tons of carbon dioxide while providing food, feed, fertilizer, fiber and biofuels to the world. According to a 2014 study, building with wood could reduce annual global emissions of carbon dioxide by 14 to 31 percent. Conventional wisdom suggests that wood and high-rise buildings are incompatible and that flammability is an issue. But processing and manufacturing technologies in wood is challenging those limitations. New, high-performance products are more fire-resistant as well as more cost-effective and stronger than ever. A team of scientists in Australia have tested a wide range of seaweeds mixed with feeds in artificial cow stomachs and they have found out that a species of red algae reduced methane production from livestock by 99%. This would reduce the amount of soy, corn and grass required as feed to the cows. Project Drawdown also found some very surprising solutions based on their overall ranking. Like reduced food waste which is number 3 on the list. One third of the food raised or prepared does not make it from farm or factory to fork. The food we waste is responsible for roughly 8% of global emissions. There are a number of ways to address this issue. In lower income countries, improving infrastructure for storage, processing and transportation is essential. In higher income regions, major interventions are needed at the retail and consumer levels. Beyond addressing emissions, these efforts can also help to meet future food demand. Plant-rich diet is number four on the list. Shifting to a diet rich in plants is a demand-side solution to global warming that runs counter to the meat-centric Western diet, which is on the rise globally. Plant-rich diets reduce emissions and also tend to be healthier, leading to a lower rates of chronic diseases. Education lays the foundation for vibrant lives for girls and women, their families and their communities. It also is one of the most powerful levers available for avoiding emissions by curbing population growth. Women with more years of education have fewer and healthier children and actively manage their reproductive health. Educated girls realize higher wages and greater upward mobility, contributing to economic growth. Their rates of maternal mortality drop, as do mortality rates of their babies. They are less likely to marry as children or against their will. They have lower incidence of HIV, AIDS, and malaria. Their agricultural plots are more productive and their families better nourished. Today, there are economic, 
cultural and safety related barriers that still impede 62 million girls around the world from realizing their right to education. Educating girls is surprisingly number six on the list. Related with educating girls is family planning, the number seven solution. Securing women's right to voluntary, high-quality family planning around the world would have powerful positive impacts on the health, welfare, and life expectancy of both women and their children. It also can affect greenhouse gas emissions. Based on carbon dioxide equivalent reductions, educating girls and family planning are number six and number seven solutions respectively, compared to the number one solution, refrigerant management. However, if we combine number six and number seven, it becomes the number one solution. So to summarize, these are the top 20 solutions. Refrigerant management is number one. Educating girls and family planning are number six and number seven. Electricity generation is five of top 20 and food is eight of top 20 solutions. Which is the most important out of all these solutions? All of them. Every solution is important. So what's the call to action? Well, we're sure that there's at least one of these hundred solutions that you're most passionate about and aspire to make drawdown happen. Yes, drawdown is possible.